Hello everyone. Today I'm going to speak about the managed call cyst. I'm going to introduce about the Baker cyst and I'm going to uh, speak about uh, its uh, treatment protocol and uh, how to identify on MRI and uh, can you identify an x-ray and the clinical pictures and uh, what is the fate of this uh, fate of this meniscal cyst the most common cyst you know is the baker cyst you might have heard and you might have read about the baker cyst but uh, it is beyond meniscal cysts are beyond the baker cyst uh, we have perimeniscal and the paramenisical cyst baker cyst is a type of paramenisical cyst i will explain about the differences between the peri and the paramenisical cyst uh, if we uh, look into the details of this cyst uh, uh, we have uh, two meniscus medial and the lateral meniscus uh, when there occur tears or there occur trauma or uh, like due to some uh, uh, age changes degenerative tears uh, what happens in these cases now these meniscus this show these are the, these meniscus when they are the closed triangular structure when we see in a cross section and uh, when there occur a tear in this meniscus the synovial fluid that will seep into the meniscus and uh, sometimes what happen is uh, uh, you have heard about tension pneumothorax there is a valve like system happens there the fluid goes out uh, and it is not coming in it will just go out 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 and uh, there is no way of entering it entering the fluid coming back to the, the there is no way of uh, coming back of the fluid into the uh, into the like uh, chest and the okay it is just going out out just like that there is a wall like mechanism if gets created after a tear so what will happen is the synovial fluid that will seep into but it will not come back into the joint it will seep out of the joint it will not come back into the joint so the fluid will keep on accumulating into the meniscus and slowly what will happen is uh, this meniscus will uh, try to dilate itself it, because of the fluid accumulation and the meniscus uh, will get thinned out and it will give appearance of a cyst now this cyst is the peri meniscal cyst this is this all is happening inside the meniscus so peri i i means inside the meniscus now if the tear is horizontal tear in horizontal tear throughout the width of the meniscus the tear is there so the fluid will goes in to the meniscus it will goes out of the joint out of the other end of the meniscus and it will go out of the joint capsule so this way the fluid is from the joint to the meniscus from the meniscus to the outer end of the meniscus from the outer end of the meniscus out of the joint capsule then it keeps on accumulating outside the joint so this is the para meniscal cyst peri means inside the joint para outside the joint now outside the better to say outside the joint capsule now this para meniscal cyst which is happening outside the joint capsule this is known as your baker cyst now so this baker cyst they are lying outside the capsule okay now let's look at the Mm, which is the most common type of cyst and what are the location of the tear which are related to the matlab, cyst now we have two meniscus medial and the lateral meniscus most commonly cyst occur on the medial side why because the medial meniscus uh, it gets torn more commonly why because of its capsular attachment and the periphery whereas the lateral meniscus it is more of a circular shape and it is it has loose attachment in the periphery so it doesn't get torn so easily so medial meniscus it gets torn more easily and in the medial meniscus uh, uh, which is the part which is most commonly get torn it is the posterior horn of the medial meniscus so uh, med most common cyst is medially 
and it is medially and uh, because it is occur because it is occurring uh, uh, in the region of the posterior horn so it is posterior medially located most commonly now in the lateral meniscus the most common tear associated with the meniscal cyst is the uh, uh, anterior horn tear and the middle third of the meniscus tear that is related to the lateral meniscal cyst okay and if you look at the ratio numbers thing like you look at the ratio which is uh, as uh, uh, when we compare the medial and the lateral one and the cyst relation uh, it is 2 is to 1 so in the medially 2 and the 1 in the lateral lateral meniscus <coughs> and the next thing uh, uh, this patient comes to us now let's have a scenario uh, OPD scenario the patient we have two types two patient categories young and the old one the young patient comes to us he's coming to us with a complaint of the clicking and the locking clicking and the locking and the joint pain as usual he will give you a history of trauma okay now this history of trauma is not like immediate he will give you a history of trauma like uh, it has happened two months or three months back after that at that time he had some swelling but he continued to move one in shop to any doctor so now he is complaining that I have some locking and catching sensation and I have some pain little bit pain okay but the locking and catching sensation is affecting me so what will you do next now in this in this scenario first of all we have to examine this patient we have to look for the laxity we have to look for the joint line tenderness the joint line tenderness is the most sensitive thing in case of meniscus tear okay the locking and catching sensation that will tells us about uh, like the tear is there okay the tear, the meniscus tear is there okay that will also tell us what now next thing we'll do the mcmurray test to rule out the mcmurray internal rotation and the external rotation to rule out the tear and now after examining and we we'll look for the clinically locally uh, is there any swelling uh, uh, around the joint and we look in the popliteal fossa basically uh, the, if there is any swelling or not like if it is a becker cyst there will be a swelling we can we can feel it we can palpate it or it will be visible if it is large enough and uh, if it is a perimeniscal cyst then you won't be able to feel it okay so we got the patient with the joint line tenderness with the locking and the catching sensation next thing we will do is the usually what we will do we should get an MRI but 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 we don't get an x-ray over here why because in x-ray we cannot see the soft tissue so we have to get an mri we have to get an mri in the mri this collection of the cyst only we have to see the t2 images this collection of the fluid inside the cyst that will appear bright on the t2 image okay so mri is the best investigation to diagnose a cyst okay on that we can clearly see it is perimeniscal or it is paramenuscal it's outside or it's inside we can see it clearly so we are able to now, now we have come to a diagnosis uh, in case of a young individual then that means he is having a meniscal cyst now let's come to another individual we are looking at an old, old age individual he is coming up he is coming up with the same locking and catching transition we have to rule out the osteoarthritis also here now in the older individual what happens what is the reason uh, what is the reason why the cyst is forming inside those individual see these people have degenerating meniscal tear because of the age related degenerative tear that is happening that these uh, degenerative are more complex okay. and uh, that's why in these individual uh, in these individual paramediscal cysts are more common because the in degenerative uh, the tear is like more vast it's like uh, the whole width and all the length of the meniscus it may get damaged because of that because of that uh, they will have a, a paramediscal cyst that is one of the thing in case of older individual now now how do we manage these people so how do we manage what are the options we have what the doctor basically when you come to a doctor when you come to a consultant uh, they will explain you about the few things if you are young or if you are old and depending on the types of the tear they will explain you the uh, these are the these are the procedure these are the medication you can get like whenever the patient is coming for the first time he's having uh, we are seeing in the mri there's a small peri or paramedical system what we can do there we can just give him rest uh, we just ask him to rest take some medication and anti-inflammatory and physiotherapy basically you know in small cyst it is useful okay now second option we have is the uh, we can inject steroid we can like decompression needle guided decompression usg guided decompression and we can inject the steroid usg guided that we can do but this thing 
the injection of the steroid and the decompression is done only in the young individual who are not having complex degenerative radial tear just keep in mind those who are not having complex degenerative radial tear okay now the next option we have is the arthroscopic decompression in arthroscopic decompression we will go we do the diagnostic diagnostic arthroscopy then we will uh, uh, do the cyst decompression and if the meniscus is repairable and the patient is young we will repair it otherwise after decompression uh, we will do the partial meniscectomy where we were uh, we were doing the arthroscopic decompression uh, by uh, we were doing in, uh, arthroscopic decompression we will we were decompressing the cyst from the inside and uh, we were uh, uh, repairing it if it was young or repairable and uh, if it is complex degenerative radial tear in the old individual we were doing partial meniscectomy and remember we don't have to leave a remnant if you are, we are doing partial uh, partial meniscectomy because Again, what will happen? The cyst will form, and the patient will again come to you. He will complain again. You didn't do good. And the next thing is, uh, the next thing is, uh, if the cyst is a bigger cyst, like it is not inside the joint, it is not perimeniscal, it is paramenisical. Then what we need to do? We will go from the posterior uh, posterior aspect into from the popliteal fossa we will make a l-shape incision we will go in between the semi membranosus and uh, the medial head of gastronemius we will make an interval between the two and we will excise the cyst there we also have to do the radical excision of the cyst we do not have to uh, leave a leave remnant of the meniscus otherwise the cyst will reform okay and there will be a poor prognosis so that's all about the meniscal cyst. Thank you.